Welcome to Around the Region and Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Kayla Buchanan and on tonight's show we're going to take a look at a few different kinds of loves including some female athletes who absolutely love their sports and the secret meaning behind some of your favorite Valentine's Day flowers. And up first we're going to talk to some coaches, players and local fans about the love they have for the sport of hockey. <laughs> The CWHL is the Canadian Women's Hockey League, except um, there's actually a team from Boston. So there's five teams in our league, um, Team Alberta, Team Montreal, Toronto, Brampton and Boston. And um, it's comprised of mostly out of college players. So normally we're about 21 years old and, and up. It goes all the way to, I think there's some 30 year olds as well. So it's, it's a senior w women's league, um, the top league in, pro in uh, North America. The biggest difference obviously is the rule we can't physically uh, full-on body checks like if players are going in opposite directions we can't have the focus on the body that doesn't mean it's not a physical game as a lot of the midget triple a teams that have played against our national team find out like it's a pretty physical game still but it's just not the full-on head-on-head uh, -head body body contact the women's game though they're allowing more body contact but not the full-out hitting it would be the biggest difference between men's and women's hockey we like to focus more on puck movement, getting shooting, shooting and all those things where um, the boys still focus a lot on the body contact. Other than that, like I said, the biggest difference is really there's more of an emphasis on skill and puck possession in the women's game because of the lack of contact. It's a lot tougher to you know, trap and one, two, two teams and interfere with people and it's just a faster, more free-flowing, uh, skill-based game than the men's game. The top four teams make the playoffs. We're struggling for our lives right now. That was a pretty big loss for us today. Uh, the top four teams go to the Clarkson Cup, which is in the third week in March in Toronto, I believe, this year. And uh, they play like a round robin and then the top two teams in the round robin play for the Clarkson Cup. We do have a draft system, you know, we do a lot of recruiting and try to find out who's interested in playing for which teams, but uh, we do have a draft. The girls uh, coming out of university and college have to declare themselves eligible for the draft in order for us to draft them. And, uh, and then it's a negotiation whether you can actually get the players to come and uh, play for your teams or not. And the biggest obstacle we face, obviously, is the lack of money to pay them. And so we're, we're out trying to pound the pavement and help them find jobs in the respective communities and work things out that way. Um, even though we consider ourselves a professional league, it's more of a professionally run league, and they don't get paid at all. Um, a lot of them work either full-time or part-time. Some of the Olympians who manage to make enough money to survive on their speaking engagements and stuff, they train full-time and don't really work, but that, those are few and far between. Really. Myself, I'm, I'm involved in the national team, so they require a lot of commitment, um, a lot of time spent on the ice and off the ice. So for that, it makes it very hard to work full-time. Um, I do not have a full-time job right now, I'm working part-time. And um, that's, the, that's the sacrifice and the commitment I need to make to hockey to get to that next level. And my goal is to make the 2014 Olympics. So I'm working very hard to do so. So um, with that, it's, you, it, it's hard to balance both, but you just have to find a way. You have to be really um, knowledgeable of your time and um, yeah, just be very organized. I kind of came into the women's game accidentally. I, I played for 11 years professionally, uh, eight years in the NHL. and. Uh, Coached, I've been coaching now for over 20 years and uh, I was actually an assistant coach with the Atlanta Thrashers in 2003 and, and uh, got let go there with the head coach, came back to Calgary and kind of got into the women's game accidentally and I, I really loved it since then. They're, they're all sponges for learning. They're, it's a terrific environment for coaches um, and not to say a lot of the guys aren't sponges but you get a little bit more resistance on the men's side generally speaking. Uh, but they're great people to work with and I have really, really enjoyed working with the females and as I mentioned, the game is, is a very good skill-based game and it's fun to coach it. I think to, to be able to um, bring awareness to um, small communities that there are 
um, leagues for w women to play in. And I think a lot of times people just think that college is the highest level women can uh, get to and that pretty much when they're done college, they're done playing. But now this gives us an avenue to play outside of college and after college. So I think it's, it's, wonderful, um, it's a wonder wonderful league for us. And when we come back after this quick break, we're going to find out what some local female players think about the Canadian Women's Hockey League.